In multi-device application development, it's really important to make sure your user interface looks great on all platforms. Luckily, Fire UI makes this really easy. On controls like the tab control, you can set the tab position to platform default, which causes the tabs to automatically change position on each platform according to the design guidelines for that platform. You can also preview it on different platforms right here from the IDE and create variant views for specific devices. This gives you the ability to create a view that takes full advantage of larger displays on tablets or desktops, while also looking good on devices like watches, Google Glass, and phones. And then to preview in multiple places at the same time, you can come over here to the multi-device preview and add any platforms you want to preview it on. And then you'll know what your user interface is going to look like across all platforms. Now, all this is great, but nothing beats actually seeing your user interface on the target device, which you can do now thanks to the Fire UI live preview feature. Live preview gives you the ability to preview your user interface on actual physical devices. There's lots of information about it in the doc wiki, but I'll let you know that we do ship with the source so that you recompile it and make changes, adding additional packages for other components and deploy it to any devices you want to, or you can deploy it via binary as well. Before I show you this though, I'm going to load a style here on my style book. Let's go for the Windows 10 modern blue style. So now we've loaded a style here just for Windows 10. So you'll see a variety of devices here. All of these are connected to my IDE. This is my iPad mini. Notice there's no wires on these devices. They're connected wirelessly over Wi-Fi using the app tethering technology because they're all on the same network. So iPad mini running iOS, Android phone running Android, Dell tablet running Windows 10, my IDE is running on Windows 10 here, and then over here is my MacBook Pro running OS 10. Now all of them are running the uh, live preview application. So now I can connect any of these to the IDE and get the live preview. So let's go ahead and start with the iPad here. Hit connect. So it's got the preview up on the iPad here. Now you'll notice right away that the screen is not blue, it's white, and that's because the blue theme I have loaded is the Windows 10 modern blue theme. So it only shows up on Windows 10, doesn't show up on the iPad. Also, the tabs have moved from the top to the bottom because on Windows, tabs go on the top, on iOS, tabs go on the bottom. If I make a change, like let's add a button on here. Uh, you don't see the border on iOS, but the button is there. You'll see it says button one. If I change tabs, it also changes tab on the iPad. And also the iPad is live, so I can tap in the iPad and edit this. And that's because the user interface is running, but it is not actually running the code behind. So if there was something that happened on the text box change, that wouldn't happen. So now let's connect the Android device here. So we'll just tap on Studio and hit connect. And we'll see it connects. And again, as I make changes, like for example, changing tabs, it changes tabs. And you'll notice on Android, again, the tabs are on the top, whereas iOS, the tabs are on the bottom. So let's go ahead and add Windows 10. We'll just tap on the item we want and hit connect. And we'll see there's the window appeared on Windows 10. Now this time you'll notice it is blue. That's because it's got the Windows 10 theme applied to it. So we see it in with the Windows 10 theme, the blue theme. And now let's go ahead and do the OS 10. And on here, we'll just tap the one we want and hit connect. And it connects and brings it up. And it's not blue. And that's because, like, like I said, the theme is only for Windows 10. So it'll show up on Windows 10. You can manage live preview in the IDE here. If you just go to the Fire UI live preview page and preferences. In here, this allows you to turn it on and off allows you to change your server name, which is the name of your IDE, how it'll show up on the devices. And then you can also set a password if you want to prevent other devices from connecting to your IDE if you work in an environment with other developers. Also, you get a list of all the connected devices, the device name and the OS that they're running. And from here, you can select one and disconnect it if you want to. So there we go. We're previewing across four devices, Windows 10, iOS, Android, and OS 10 with the new live preview feature of Fire UI. So this is a step-by-step -step overview to set up Live Preview. You see I have the Live Preview app installed on my iPad mini, and I've got 
the Rad Studio IDE installed. Now, first of all, I'm running it inside a virtual machine, so I have to have uh, my virtual machine, you'll notice is connected to the back in time network here, and the iPad mini is also connected to the back in time network. So we can check and make sure the subnet mask and IP address are there. So then inside our virtual machine here, I set it up with the network as bridged, which then actually connects the virtual machine itself, uh, client OS to the network directly instead of uh, shared. So use bridge so that the IDE is publicly visible on the network. Otherwise the iPad cannot find the IDE. And we can look at the IP address here. And we see that it is uh, on the same subnet here. So they should be able to find each other. And actually I can ping the iPad here if I wanted to. Ping 10.0.1.15. So if you are having trouble, if you can't ping the iPad from your uh, machine, then you're not going to be able to get there. But also, the if your machine's not on the same subnet, if it's not on the bridge network, it won't work. So now that I've got everything connected correctly, I can open up Live Preview App. And it's scanning the local network. It's sending out UDP packets on the local network in order to find the IDE. If it can't find it, you can use the advanced key here or advanced option to provide a IP address that it will then go to and look for it there. So if it doesn't find it or if the machine is not um, on the same subnet, if it's across the subnet, but still accessible over uh, TCP IP, then you can use the advanced in order to find it. Uh, this all behaves the same as the app tethering technology. So in the IDE, there's some configuration for this. We've got options. And then down here under form designer, we have fire UI live preview. By default, this is turned on and the server name will be your machine name. You can rename it to whatever you want to and you can optionally provide a password. Once a device is connected, you'll see it listed here. So let's go ahead and connect. So I just select the one I want here and hit connect. So it's gone out and made a connection and you see here it shows it as connected. So now, the UI is being sent across to the iPad. Now, none of the code behind any code that would be written like event handlers on these buttons, etc., is not sent to the iPad. There's no code execution coming across. It's just the user interface is being rendered on here. So basically we're dynamically creating user interface. And if I make changes to this, like if I move something around, we see that it updates in near real time on the iPad. When you're done, you can either close the live preview app or come into options again and select the device and right click and say disconnect client and that will disconnect it, force disconnect it. So let's say you're using live preview and you've got your controls on here that you're moving around and resizing them and everything's just great. And then you've got to use a third party controller, some component that um, maybe you've created or whatever. And you add it to your form and, oh my goodness, look at that. It's not showing up on live preview. Now, everything else is still working fine. But this new component, this T-chart's not showing up. So luckily, live preview is extensible. So let's take a look at how to do that. First thing I'm gonna do, because I installed Live Preview from the App Store, is I'm gonna uninstall it. Because we're gonna install a new version of Live Preview. Okay? And then we're gonna go in here into Rad Studio and we're gonna open up the Live Preview project. Now the default location of Live Preview project is in the source tree, so you can't modify it there, so I've copied it to my projects folder so that I can make changes to it. Plus that way if I mess things up, I can always go back and revert. So I'm gonna go in here to the uh, regis.pass file that's part of live preview and I need to modify this in order to include references to the units for t-chart so I'm just going to come in here and add those units there 
And then I also have to register my classes explicitly down here in the initialization section. So I just go in here and paste those lines in there. So I've added these three units and then I'm registering it and then I'm also setting up the standard series. Once I've done that, all I have to do is redeploy this back onto my iPad again. And you see it's found my IDE. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect to it. And this is actually gonna be kind of trippy here because we've connected to our IDE while we're designing Fire UI live preview, we're live previewing live preview. So wow, little inception craziness there. So let's go ahead and go back and make a new project here. And I'm gonna save those changes so that it will be there next time. And I'm gonna go ahead and drop down that T-chart again. Oh my goodness, look at that. There is a T-chart live previewing on my iPad now as I design it in the IDE. So all that live preview goodness now supports every third-party component for FireMonkey that you want to use.